What's up guys, it's Ed from TechSource and I finally got my hands on Intel's newest and most powerful desktop CPU, the i7-6950X 10-core processor. This thing is not cheap, retailing for around 1700 bucks, it will seriously dent your wallet. So I ran some benchmarks on it and for comparison reasons, I ran the same benchmarks on the 5930K using the same test bed, which has an ASUS X9 Strix motherboard, 16GB of RAM from G-Skill, an EVGA GTX 1080 Founders Edition, and a Dark Rock Pro 3 CPU cooler. Unfortunately, I didn't have a 5960X on hand to use for the comparison, so I will be using an overclocked 5930K instead. I managed to get it to 4.6 at 1.39 volts, but it was hitting temps of 90 94 degrees Celsius on full load, which is dangerously hot, so I bumped it back down to 4.5 at 1.3 volts. The 6950X on the other hand was tested on stock frequency and 4.2 gigahertz. So before we jump into the benchmarks, let's take a quick look at the specs. So the 6950X is a 10 core 20 thread processor with a base clock of 3.0, running with a TDP of 140 watts, as do the rest of the new lineup of Intel's Broadwell eCPUs. You also get a massive 25 megabyte catch and 40 lanes of PCI 3.0 from the 6850K and above, whereas you only get 28 lanes on the 6800K. For temps, the 6950X stayed fairly cool during idle at 32 degrees Celsius and still managed to stay cool even when overclocked compared to the 5930K, which hovered around 44 degrees. And finally, during full load, both of the overclocked CPUs got to 78 degrees, whereas the stock 6950X stuck to the low 60s. So overall, the 6950X runs at much lower temps. The first benchmark test I ran was Cinebench R15, and we can see that there was almost a 25% boost between the stock and overclocked 6950X. Comparing it to the 5930K, there was a 40% increase in CPU score and only a 5% increase for FPS. Moving to Geekbench, we can see a 15% boost in multi-threaded performance between the stock and overclocked 6950X and a 35% increase from the 5930K. But when we look at single core performance, the 5930K outshines the 6950X as expected since it does have a higher clock per core. Now let's take a look at some rendering tests. So first up we have Sony Vegas Pro 13, which is an editing software that I use to edit my own videos. And for the test, I actually rendered out a 60 second raw 4K file that I shot using my GH4. For short renders, there was only a marginal difference between the stock 6950X and the overclocked. However, it was twice as fast compared to the 5930K, exporting the video in a minute and 26 seconds versus almost 3 minutes. Then I used a more CPU intensive program called Blender, which is very similar to AutoCAD, 3DS, and Maya that's used for 3D modeling. Rendering a simple frame of the animation took 17 minutes and 55 seconds on the stock 6950X and 25 minutes on the 5930K. You can definitely see that CPUs with better multi-core performance tend to do better. Similar results were found on the second template that I rendered, with the overclocked 6950X finishing up in just over 7 minutes, compared to almost 11 from the 5930K. And finally, let's take a look at some benchmarks from GTA 5, which is a CPU intensive game. We can clearly see that there was only a 5% performance increase from the 5930K and the overclocked 6950X in 1080p, and the difference becomes minuscule as we bump up the resolution. So in conclusion, should you buy this CPU for gaming? The answer is no. Even in CPU intensive games, you're only getting a 5% increase in FPS, and that's if you're playing in 1080p. High resolutions will get you nothing more. However, if you're swimming in a lot of money and also do a lot of 3D modeling and editing, then I would say why not? But to the average enthusiast and gamer, this CPU just isn't worth it. I mean, after all, this CPU wasn't created for gamers, but more for on the productivity side. But that's basically it for the video. If you guys enjoyed it or if this was helpful, make sure to leave a like to show your support. And I'll see you guys in the next video.